Well, I'm delighted to be here to celebrate uh, longitudinal studies and the new birth cohort study mm. in particular, now called Life Study, funded by the SRC and the MRC, Medical Research Council. And I'm particularly pleased to have had briefly the chance to praise David Willett for his prolonged and persistent campaign to persuade his government to find the necessary many millions to set up what was called the, 19, the 2012 um, uh, study, and now looks like the 2015. Um, and uh, I think we've heard quite how involved he is and how much, how well he understands the importance of it. I think here is for once a politician doing the right thing for the right reason with nothing he or his government can expect to gain from it, either with the public now, nor, I think, will the history books be very kind on the country. The country might well reflect quite hard, badly, on this uh, era's, uh, this government's reputation. In the long and distinguished history of British social science, these birth co cohort studies really are the crown jewels, uh, as all of you will know who, who draw upon them so frequently for, for your work. David Willits has prevented the vandalism, which he mentioned briefly, that broke the vital chain in these studies uh, the last time that his party was in power. So we have 46, we have 58, we have 70, and then the gaping 30-year hole, an entire missing generation unrecorded until the millennium cohort of 2000. Studying ourselves is something the British do exceptionally well. Social scientists, geneticists, psychologists, demographers, medical researchers, epidemiologists flock here from all over the world seeking answers to fundamental questions from our unique series of birth cohort studies and no one else has anything quite like them. It was the 1958 study that revealed mothers who smoked have smaller, sicker babies. Comparison between children of 1946 and 1958 saw them grow longer legs, better nutrition, ironing out class differences in physique. The Millennium Study gave the uh, wake-up call on finding a quarter of children obese by the age of four. Only cohort studies could have revealed the sudden slowdown in social mobility, which uh, David Willits mentioned, for those born between 58 and 70, though it is, of course, as he also mentioned in some dispute, it's the same data that allows John Goldthorpe to query whether there has really been enough, been uh, very much change in already low mobility, uh, and that's a very healthy academic debate. Potential answers are here to all of the perplexing questions. What makes children resilient to dreadful early beginnings while others are damaged for life? How do you protect the vulnerable before it's too late? It's a good moment to celebrate other great social research, such as the Understanding Society, which you mentioned, cohort uh, studies coordinated by Jane Elliott and colleagues at the Institute of Education, and the tremendously use useful WORS, the Workplace Employment Relations Study, which is co-sponsored by the department we're in today, Business, Innovation and Skills. Once, a Tory cabinet minister it was Sir Keith Joseph, of course, denounced social science as socialism and tried to abolish the research council that was supporting it. You could only conclude from that that he didn't like the inconvenient facts about society that social science unearths, which might indeed require somewhat more social democratic interventions to resolve. I'm accustomed, as I am, to praising this government under David Cameron and George Osborne, the science budget has enjoyed relative protection and the ESRC has done, in an age of austerity, when all things are relative, relatively well. Though obviously university social scientists uh, will still have a lot to complain about. And again, I'd like to have said that David Willits, in his constant and courageous support for social science, has really played a blinder in this government. And I'm glad to say that he is not a minister to go in for the philistine complaints about the nature of research subjects that we've heard so often in the past, often from Labour ministers too. This new birth cohort study has a wonderful potential to provide a snapshot of the conditions of mother and babyhood in the middle of this fraught decade. Then again later, as children are followed up periodically, it will paint an insightful picture of changing economic, cultural and social circumstances throughout 21st century Britain. We mustn't forget, though, that its success will depend 
on the continued support of every future government to provide the funds to keep going back to review its subjects. As an eager would-be user of the birth cohort, I'm sorry it's taken so long uh, to get going, delayed by three years. I understand that with a large sample, contacting and keeping in touch with thousands of mothers and children isn't easy, but I do hope it won't be long before we see some first results. As the BBC's former BBC uh, Social Affairs editor, I can only welcome the many good health and clinical stories that are likely to emerge from the biological dimensions of this study. But the life study must also seek to find out just as much about the social side, about income, <coughs> class, education, and the social dimensions of households and child rearing, including the role of fathers. And Sharon Witherspoon deserves special credit for securing mm. Nuffield support on that. It is essential that social science and medical elements run together equally in this study and that they are equally weighted. And I hope we'll soon see a senior social scientist appointed alongside Professor Desertu as well. Let's never forget how utterly interlinked health and social conditions are in everyone's lives. So let's celebrate data today. But data demands analysis. Data doesn't speak for itself. Social scientists need questions, and many will come from the public and political debate. Somebody over there suggested we should be asking ministers what it is they want. If in Britain we have world-class longitudinal data, I'm afraid you'd be hard-pressed to say we have world-class social policy that's based on it from any government. <laughs> and that, I fear, is because what longitudinal studies keep reminding us, and the life study will probably tell us again, is that life chances are so tightly bound to household income. Social class remains a powerful determinant of where you go, what you do, and uh, where your children end up. The data confirms Britain as a country where background is destiny for too many of us, locking people into a restricted set of job, job options or no jobs at all. Any measuring of social progress, or indeed regress, is to be found here. The reason why longitudinal studies have not been converted into world-class social policy is because they keep showing it's so difficult. It would take heroic efforts in income distribution, in schooling, in early years intervention, in childcare, to level up children's life chances in such an unequal society as ours. I know that civil servants in the Department of Work and Pensions are interested in the cohort studies and understanding society, but what about their ministers or those in the Home Office, health, education, let alone the Treasury? The ESRC has been helping the Cabinet Office and other departments establishing what work centres, which were mentioned earlier, using evaluations, trials and, we hope, empirical data about change in society. I'd like to be hopeful, but if the data and analysis point up the dis dysfunctions of inequality and privilege, will ministers be listening? I must admit, um, to a vested interest in some of this, my partner is David Walker, who's at the back, who chairs the ESRC Methods and Infrastructure Committee, which has been working hard to strengthen these studies. We've written several books together that often draw on this research, among them unjust rewards, looking at inequality, and the verdict, analysing the outcomes of what the Labour government did, where it succeeded, where it failed. An indication of how hard it is to make social change comes from data showing that, at best, Labour only almost stopped inequality getting worse. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> there is no natural synergy between social research and politics. Labour at least attempted at first to embark on evidence-based policies with pilot schemes, but academics and politicians inhabit different time zones. When results emerge, the minister has usually long gone and the department has new priorities. In politics, the impulse to announce a new eye-catching initiative rarely waits for hard evidence. DWP take note. Many years from now, when comparisons are made between the effects of this government's choices and those of previous and future governments, these studies will be what provides conclusive evidence. So we should be especially grateful to David Willits for putting evidence first, even if it risks history recording some awkward facts about his era. He knows, in Pope's words, though, that the proper study of mankind is man. Thank you. Thank you.